So I want you to know that's what it's like to be at the bottom of the crap pile through no fault of our own for many of us. I want to tell you a little bit about my story. I want to tell you what happened to me in, in very quickly when I was discharged, medically discharged from the armed forces in 2000. When I was medically discharged, I thought, no worries, the Department of Veterans Affairs will help me get back on my feet and they'll look after me. Um, well, that did not happen to me. So for me to be able to survive as a single mum with two kids, I had no other choice but to go to Centrelink. I had work, I'd been serving rotary at tables from the time I was 10. I was working at the Speedway at 12 and I had my first job at Kmart when I was 14 months, 14 years and nine months. I worked in nightclubs and I, I worked in um, a supermarket during that time. I took a gap year and went and worked in the real world. That's what I did. So you can imagine um, to me what it was like, how shameful it felt and how demeaning it was for me to be able to work my whole life to become a single mum living with two kids trying to support them on a disability support pension. During that time, our times were tough. There were times when I had to say no to my son who was great at football and great at athletics and great at basketball and who had the advantage of being able to represent his state and telling him on two occasions, I'm sorry, mate, but you can't go because I can't afford for you to go. At one stage there, he was wearing football boots that were too small for him from the winter beforehand because I couldn't afford to get him some. He had to wait. There were times when I would sit in a corner and cry because I felt so ashamed. For two days, I didn't know how I was going to put bread and milk on the table. There was a time when my fridge broke and for three weeks we lived out of an esky. I put the esky under the house so the ice would last longer. That's what my life was like. There was three occasions where I couldn't afford my rego for four weeks, one time, six weeks, another time, and ten weeks, another time, and I drove around without a registered car. On two separate occasions I drove around without having a licence because I couldn't renew it. This is what it is like. It is not a choice for many of us to be on welfare. It is shameful and it is embarrassing. And it is bloody tough. But we do it, not because we want to, but because circumstances put us there. And for you to take more money off those people, you have no idea how bloody tough it is. Every little cent counts to those people. What you are doing is shameful. And if you really realise the damage that you are continually doing to that part of society, you would stop doing it. So I'm just asking you, I know you haven't been through that, but there are some of us in here that have, and it was difficult during our lives, and our kids paid the price for that through no fault of our own. We're not living when we're like that. We're surviving. We're in a bloody war zone and we are surviving. And that's all we're doing. Each day we're surviving. We are surviving to try and put bread on the table. We are surviving to try and make sure that our kids can get the basics in life. We are trying to make sure our kids are better so our kids can go to decent schools if we want that choice. You know, I was really lucky in some areas, and I, I thank St Brendan Shaw College, who allowed me, when I got in very difficult situations for three years, not to pay school fees for my children. But they let them stay there. So I want you to know that's what it's like to be at the bottom of the crap pile through no fault of our own for many of us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lambie.